the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is the highly respected leader of our University of Hawaii athletic programs. He is David Matlin, and today we are going beyond sports. Hey, David, good to see you. Hello, Rusty. Great seeing you, too. Uh, thrilled to be on the show today. Now, David, can you give us the latest updates with the coronavirus situations with your athletic programs? Yeah, I definitely can update you, and I, and I can also promise you in about 15 minutes after I update you, things will have changed probably. Yeah. But, um, you know, on, on, on the big, big picture, uh, we're, we're working with our conferences, the NCA, also Lead One, uh, which is the FBS, all the FBS schools, working on protocols for safe return and competition. Obviously, um, we've had to relook at our budgets because there's been a financial impact. Uh, we're doing that with two core values in mind. Uh, the, first, the first one is health and safety of our student athletes, our coaches, our staff, our university community, and our fans. That's paramount. And secondly, our second core value that we measure every decision we make against is to continue scholarship and education of our student athletes and to keep our staff working productively. So we're focusing on all those things. Obviously, we have to do this, uh, steward our money uh, well uh, to, to make these things happen. And, you know, obviously we want to still compete at a high level, but we have to take care of those first two things first. Yeah, that makes sense. And David, if we go back some years, I know you graduated from the University of Michigan. And how was the experience of being in that University of Michigan stadium watching those uh, Wolverine football games? That was a pretty phenomenal experience. I actually started going to Michigan football games. I moved to Michigan when I was about six years old. My dad started taking me in 1971. We used to go to one or two games before I even went to college there. Uh, it was phenomenal. I mean, you have 100,000 people, the biggest crowd in the country. Um, you know, great fans uh, coming from all around the Midwest area. You know, just great energy and, and, and lots of fun. I mean, go, I'll go back to the Bull Shemba after days, you know, which was just a, you know, a, amazing um, ambiance there. Yeah, I can imagine. I, I would watch it on TV with uh, Jim Harbaugh as the quarterback. And so when yeah. when did you end up coming to Hawaii? Um, well, you know, I, I was I was born in Honolulu. OK, uh, I lived here for two weeks. And then uh, well, my dad was the general manager of the Hawaii Islanders uh, AAA yeah. team. But then, then we went to Vancouver, Seattle, Milwaukee, uh, two places in Michigan. And uh, I was a junior in college. and. Uh, I met my future wife, who um, who's from Honolulu, and uh, we realized we were born in the same hospital, had the same delivery and doctor, and our parents lived about a half mile from each other. Within about two years, I had proposed, and we were already married, and um, and then we moved to Houston, where I worked at the Houston Astros for six years, and then like local girls, uh, she wanted to come home, so we moved back here in 1993, uh, really without jobs, and uh, if I would have known how hard it was going to be, I might not have done it, but I'm really glad we did. Wow. And so you mentioned your wife and then you have your, your two kids, right? So tell me about them. Uh, that's, a, that's a great photo. Um, you know, my wife, Dana, we've been married 31 years. As I mentioned, we met at University of Michigan. She's an uh, amazing partner. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't know how, how I would get through a day without her. Uh, my oldest daughter is Kisa, who is a a graduate from University of Notre Dame, which is tough for a Michigan guy to say, um, <laughs> as well as well as uh, she got her master's from SMU. Uh, she's in the uh, field of education. Uh, her passion is environmental science. And my son, Ross, uh, just graduated uh, uh, from USC's film school. And uh, he's actually planning on doing the, the Peace Corps uh, in Guatemala, but that's on a little bit of hold right now. So he's planning on doing that for a few years. But uh, obviously, they're my pride and joy. And you see our dog there, Nala, our, you know, that makes the Matlin Five. Yeah, <laughs> so cute. <laughs> now, David, um, did you read my first book? And I want to know about what you, if you did, and what you thought about it. Yeah, I, I, I definitely did. And, um, you know, I, I, what, what, I got, what I got to kick out is, is, you know, you had your four Ps, you know, and it, people, purpose, process, and performance. Well, I always had three Ps, you know, passion, persistence, 
uh, and purpose. Uh, but, you know, it, it's so, I, now I have four Ps because people's got to be there. I mean, what, one thing I learned from my dad is it's all about people. So, um, you know, I, it resonated with me. And uh, what I really liked, uh, and it was just a lot of your headliner quotes at, at the very beginning, just how, how that really uh, set it up for the whole chapter. Uh, just uh, some great leadership tools. And, um, you know, frankly, it's helped me to, to, to continue to develop, you know, where I am as a leader and to pick up some uh, tools to go forward. Well, those P's, those are all necessary. And I, I like your P's as well. <laughs> and David, I, I know you became athletic director in 2015. Uh, what kind of culture did you want to establish when you became athletic director for your athletic department? Well, you know, what I, what I would say, it, it's really a winning with integrity culture. And, and what that what that really means, it's not just winning, you know, on the field of player, on the field of competition. Obviously, we're competitive. We like to win. You know, we, we like to win. I think there's value in, in striving for excellence. But it's winning in the classroom. It's, it's winning in the community. It's, it's supporting each other. It's, it's really, because, you know, if you don't win with integrity, it's really not winning. And, and what we're trying to do is develop um, young men and women who are going to be future leaders and, and great fathers and mothers and friends. Um, coaches can have an amazing impact uh, on that. And, and as administrators, our, our job is really to equip and enable both coaches and student athletes. Yeah, it's all about integrity. And David, I know that Spectrum Sports is really stepping up to support University of Hawaii Athletics, and they hi had hired me to do some color commentary with Scott Robbs right there, who is just an absolute amazing guy. I mean, he, he has a special gift of doing commentary. And um, what are your thoughts about how, how awesome it is how they added you know, tennis and water polo to, this, to the lineup? Oh, that, that was huge. I mean, we, we had started discussions about covering some of our Olympic sports, some sports that might not get as much notoriety. Um, and they stepped up right away. And frankly, they found it to be really good programming. I mean, the water polo matches were great. That's a fast moving sport. Uh, I think they're planning on doing more of it. And tennis worked out real well. Plus, we have some real good uh, tennis teams. And you're, you're right about Scott. I mean, Scott is, uh, it's, it's interesting. My dad, when he was a um, you know, such a small world. When, when my dad was the general manager of the Hawaiian Islanders, he actually hired Don Robbs, I think, as the uh, PA announcer back in the early 60s. So uh, Scott does a phenomenal job. He's probably one of the most versatile people that I've ever worked with uh, in that business. He can, he can do it all. What are your thoughts about uh, your tennis coaches, uh, Joel for the men and June for the women? Well, J this was Joel's first year, did a, did a phenomenal job did a phenomenal job. Unfortunately, it got cut short right when they were starting to get their own. I mean, he has some really good team. And I really enjoy when I, I, you know, I meet with the, before I hire a coach, the one thing I do for every coaching job, I meet with the team and I ask them, I don't ask them who a coach they want to hire. They might tell me that, but I, but I ask them what characteristics are they looking for in a coach from their perspective. And I, a lot of times I take anywhere from three to four pages of notes. Once they get going, it's pretty amazing. And I, I just found our, our, both of our tennis team student athletes are amazing. And both Joel, Joel and June have done an amazing job. I mean, June for many years, and uh, I think our tennis future looks very bright. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And David, what do you look for when you're hiring head coaches? You know, it's, um, it's pretty simple in some ways. Uh, it, it, it really is about character. I mean, and, and it's character. Now you got to define it and, you know, you got to define it and you got, you have to do a lot of research. You have to talk to a lot of people. Um, but it's um, because a lot of people say, well, you got to hire the best coach. Well, you know, most people that make your finalists and your shortlist, they can all coach. They might have some different philosophies, some different theories some different schemes, but it really is about character and work ethic. And, um, you know, and, and one thing is I've been fortunate to be in this business for a while where there's a lot of people you can call to find out how they've how they worked in different situations. So, you know, other, other than, you know, character and that winning with integrity uh, mantra, um, you know, everything else is pretty much a distant second. Now those things factor in, but um, to me, um, those are more like the tiebreakers. You, 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 in order to be even considered, you have to have those first two things. I agree with you. And what are your goals for uh, the UH athletics uh, nowadays? Yeah, well, you know, the, the goals really haven't changed. It, our goals are, you know, 
maybe threefold. Maybe I'll give you a fourth reason, the fourth thing. But you know, it's obviously it's to educate young men and women. Um, I'm excited that uh, we had our highest CUNE GPA in the fall at 3.13. That's our average for all of our students for the whole time they've been there. Our semesters are always over 3.0. Um, I, we've started keeping stats on these, in, like, I think, 20 years ago. So uh, great support from our academic um, support, Dr. Canberra and our counselors do a great job. And frankly, it's a lot of it's our coaches bringing the right people in and focusing on academics. Obviously, athletically, we want to be provide great sportsmanship and we want to win. Um, one metric we, we look at is um, the Learfield Cup standings. Uh, last year, uh, we were 65 out of about 350. It was our highest ranking in uh, 10 years, I believe. And out of the non-Power 5 schools, we were 10th out of 290. Uh, and that's basically how you do an NCAA tournament performance. The disappointing thing is this year, we were trending to be higher than last year to get more Learfield Cup standing points than last year. Uh, but obviously, our season was cut short. David, what are, uh, what, are, you, what are some of the biggest challenges you deal with as AD? Well, you know, the resource, resource management, I mean... We, we have to be great stewards of our resources. Um, I mean, one thing I know is we do a pretty good job with the resources we have. I mean, we, you know, if, if a coach comes to me and says, you know, we can't win if we don't have this, I'll say, well, you know, we are winning. It doesn't mean we don't want to do better. It doesn't mean we don't want more, but we have to be very fiscally responsible. We have to make uh, some tough choices and, and we really have to focus on what are the, what are the needs versus the wants. I mean, you obviously want to get some of those wants and we've upped our game when it comes to nutrition and we've upped their game when it comes to the academic support. Um, and even our facilities, uh, they, in the last five years, we've had great improvement. We're very blessed that the legislature has um, you know, invested in our facilities and we've got the support of the university. We've got incredible gym one and gym two practice facilities. Our tennis courts are getting repaved as we speak right now. So, um, and we're getting a new sound system at the San Sheriff Center. So we, we have a lot of those projects that we're working on. But the, the, the challenge is really just making the decisions about wh wh where you're going to invest your time and your resources. And it's all about people. Well, I like hearing that the tennis courts are getting resurfaced. <laughs> yeah, yep. It's, it's such a beautiful tennis facility that you have there. I mean, it, it needs to stay at that high level. Uh, but yeah, I like what you said about having to try to be resourceful. And um, David, I, I want to know, are there like a bunch of David Matlin clones out there? Because I don't know how you do it, because <laughs> there might be three or four different sporting events going on at UH, and I'll see you at all of them at the same time, basically. <laughs> how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, well, um, you do it because you've got a great team and a great family behind you. And, and, a, and a supportive administration at the University of Hawaii. And, and uh, I, I, I love going, I mean, I had someone recently say, well, you know, um, you know the, I guess the one good thing is you don't have to go to all these events now, so you free up some time. It's like, well, that's the best part of the job, going to the events. So a lot of times I don't stay for the whole event, but I'll, I'll be at a volleyball match, I'll go over to baseball, stop by volleyball, and then I'll stop by the tennis match also. Uh, so to me, that's the best part, to, to watch student athletes um, you know, perform at a high level and watch their passion in action. I mean, that's that's inspiring to me. I frankly go to events. I go to events for me because it inspires me, you know, to to get up the next morning early and come back and 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 hit and 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 hit you know hit it hard to continue to try to get better, a little better each day. So, David, let's talk about football now. You, you hired Coach Todd Graham, and I had him on the show a couple months ago. He is just an absolutely amazing guy. Why, why did you hire him over everybody else? Yeah. You know, we had uh, amazing people that are interested in the program. I mean, uh, the program is, you know, Nick brought the program forward. We've been in three bowl games in four years. Hawaii is a special place. Uh, so the candidates um, were, were pretty impressive. Uh, Todd, when, when we met with Todd, it was, it was in an, airport in LA, gosh, he's got incredible energy and passion. And, and frankly, I, I probably called 50 to 75 people uh, getting, learning about him. And I had some people that were uh, good friends of mine that were at Rice and Arizona State places he's worked, but it really comes down to character and that he really does want to be a leader of young men. He cares 
about where these men are going to be in 10 years from now, not just about their performance now. He's not going to sacrifice their short term for their long term. So um, I would just say it's character and he gets the winning with integrity mantra that we want to represent at the University of Kauai. Yeah, and he, you know, he has great principles and values and he has that superior culture of excellence and and I, I, I'm just so excited to see what he's going to be able to do and how he's going to really help our, our student athletes. Let's talk yeah, about, no, no, no. let's talk some volleyball now. I mean, I, I had Coach Charlie Wade on the show as well, and I'm super excited for him that his, his uh, seniors are coming back. W what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, well, for, first of all, they're, in, they're incredible student athletes. Um, I mean, they're, they're great students. I mean, one thing that a lot of people don't know about is uh, Charlie's, uh, the, the grade point average of our, our volleyball team is, you know, three, four or higher. It's one, the highest in the West. And he gets an award uh, he, he, the last few years for having great academics also. Excited that, you know, the, the plan is for them to come back. Uh, you know, they were, have been competing for a national championship and uh, this year could have been the year. So, uh, with them coming back next year, bringing back three All-Americans is obviously great, but they're All-American people also. Yeah, I, I love that. I mean, it's that's that's the most important. Um, but and then you you also hired Coach Robin Amo for women's volleyball, and and they're I mean she's doing a great job. I mean, what are your thoughts about women's volleyball? Oh, she, uh, she Robin's done an amazing job. She's hired great coaches in Angelica and Kaleo. Um, she's got a great team. She re recruits well. Um, the thing about Robin is she cares. She cares so, so much. Um, volleyball's made a big impact in her life and she wants to share that with others. And, you know, she is a relentless uh, worker. I mean, she's a, you know, but a three-time Olympian. Uh, I mean, she's just an amazing coach and she's really proven that she can bring great student athletes in here and um, you know, focus on the academics. And the year they had last year was an amazing year. I mean, yeah, for her to be an Olympian, I mean, obviously, I mean, she has to have the highest of standards and for her to be, you know, instilling that in her young women, I mean, that's, that's exactly what, what you want to see as the leader, right? No, no, no question. Just, just thrilled with, and, you know, and so much of it is, you know, the people they hire, Angelica and Kaleo, they, they, they do an incredible job also, but yeah, but Robin, you know, Robin, um, she cares. And, and when people know you, you know, they, they, what they say, they say, once they know you care, you know, they're going to, they're going to listen to you and they're going to follow you more. And, and Robin is phenomenal at that. Yeah. It's, it's empathy for sure. And, and David, the UH swimming and diving teams are having incredible success as well. Can you tell me more about that? Well, so, 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 so proud of our swimming team. They obviously do a great job academically. Uh, we ha had a uh, coach that I, I hired um, four years ago, Dan Schemmel, who won, um, you know, back-to-back -back championships. Uh, uh, for, and last year they won the men and women's. This year, yeah, uh, he, he Stanford hired him, and so we hired um, his assistant Elia, who continued the tradition of great grades, and they won a men's championship and a women's championship, and they were poised to have one of our best years in the NCAs in decades, if not uh, of all time. Great student athletes our swimmers, you talk about a dedicated bunch. I mean, these are people who get up real early in the morning and are just, are just, you know, just go for it each and every day and amazing student athletes. Yeah. I remember when I was in college, I mean, those swimmers and divers, I mean, they wake up super, super early for their practices. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how they do that, but, but they do it. And uh, what are your thoughts about uh, men's basketball coach Aaron Gano and, and, uh, and his team? Excited, uh, excited about his team. Uh, we should be announcing our schedule pretty soon, which has worked out going to be uh, one of our best schedules in quite a long time. Uh, he um, has some great recruits coming in. Uh, Iran, I mean, he, he, here's what you can say about Iran. When he came here, our um, APR, that's our academic progress rate that the NCAA me measures, it was at 937, which means if we lost one more, if, if we lost one more point, we'd be on, we might not be eligible for postseason, including conference championships. He's gotten two thousands in the last two years and he's doing it while competing. He's doing it the right way. He's got a great coaching staff. Um, and, and frankly, his, his players, they get better. So uh, looking forward to, uh, to this season of men's basketball. And I know we have a, a lot of new um, uh, athletes coming in. No, that's so exciting. I'm so happy for them. And, 
And talk to me a little bit about the, the women's basketball program as well. You know, the, the one thing I'll tell you about Laura, Laura Beeman's team, every year they get better at the end of the year. You know, they play a really tough schedule. And, and she, she is, Laura, Laura is a teacher. Laura cares about these young women. Uh, Laura is also a, a leader in the department. I mean, she, she, she um, helps in so many different ways. But uh, this year they were trending. I mean, they won their first conference uh, championship, um, Big West championship game. Uh, and then the, the season got canceled. They were trending to possibly make the NCAs, if not the NIT. And uh, like I said, you look at the success she's had since she's been here, it's pretty phenomenal. And what, what I really admire about a coach is when, when you see a team every year get better at the end of the year when they started, to me, that's, that's solid coaching. David, we, I mean, we're so lucky that we have such a beautiful Stan Sheriff Center. I mean, that, that has to attract so many student athletes that want to come and, and play, you know, basketball and volleyball. Is that, is that true? There's no question. We're blessed by the Stan Sheriff Center. It's, it's one of the best arenas in the, in the, in the West Coast. And, and it, it is phenomenal. I mean, and when you get 10,000 people in there for a men's volleyball game or a basketball game or a women's volleyball game, it is a great home field advantage, court advantage. But it's, it's a first class facility. And you got to give Rich Sheriff and his crew. Uh, it's 25 years old and, and it, it is in phenomenal shape. And, and to me, the Stan Sheriff Center, I never met Stan, but I know his son very well. It's very dear to me because uh, my first job at UH, my first office was in the ticket office at the Stan Sheriff Center. So I used to go there every day for five years. And, you know, I mean, uh, that facility, frankly, uh, without that, I probably wouldn't have gotten that job because that's when we needed to have more ticketing staff at the time. Yeah, you're right. You know, Rich Sheriff is one of my longtime close friends. And what he's done, um, you know, with his staff over these decades, I mean, it's just, it's really first class, like you said. And, and um, you know, what is, what's the latest updates with the Aloha Stadium situation that you can share? Yeah, well, um, right now, the, the most recent information is that they're still trending for 2023. Uh, we are um, involved in, um, you know, in the discussions uh, where we've given our thoughts. Uh, I mean, Coach Todd Graham met with them also. He had actually some really good thoughts because he, he was at Tulsa and some other facilities that came online. So he had that coach's eye. Um, we're going to be more involved as, as we go closer with the consultants. Um, you know, I, we're, that can be a game changer for us uh, as far as uh, for the student athletes, but also for our fans because, I mean, Scott Chan and his crew do a great job at Loa Stadium, but they're limited by a, you know, a stadium that was built in the 70s where um, I, I think we'll be able to provide a lot more fan experience uh, with the new facility and a better economic model also. Yeah, and I think that's super smart to really get the input of somebody like a coach Todd Graham because, I mean, he knows all the ins and the outs of, of every, you know, stadium that, I mean, he's played in for so long, so many different places. Yeah, there is no question that, um, I mean, coaches, they play in facilities, they know what works, they know what doesn't. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's uh, crazy. And, and he's really, you know, he pays attention to those details. And, and he was able to share some things. And frankly, we're able to incorporate some of those into our requests and, and so will the stadium. Now, you know, uh, earlier we talked about, you know, being at University of Michigan in that stadium. And then you're, you're trying to enhance the fan experience of, the new Aloha Stadium, what else can be done, you know, to to get it to that level where, I mean, even when Michigan would have just average teams, I mean, they would still sell out, I mean, every every game. How can we get UH to that level where we can uh, start selling out some of these UH uh, events? Yeah, well, you know, as far as football, I mean, for, for you know, for our, our volleyball sports and basketball, we do better than most. I mean, our volleyball is, is as good as it gets. But at, 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 at Aloha Stadium, um, a lot of it, we, we have to figure out how to, how to attract millennials, how to attract the next generation. We haven't done as good a job at that. So we have to focus on, on that. We came up with a, a ticketing package uh, this year called the H-Pass, which gave you season tickets for all events that you pay monthly for. Uh, frankly, our marketing team, I, I want to brag, uh, brag on them. They did an incredible job. Uh, they, they won a national marketing award for season ticket packages by our H pass. Our goal was to sell hundred of them. We sold 505, but, but we, we, we need to look at what matters to this group. Wi-Fi matters. Um, uh, e e events at the event themselves. 
Um, so, you know, obviously your, your food and beverage menus, the, the, what the parking lot experience, the ambiance from when you come into the stadium until you leave all matters. And I really believe with the, with the new stadium, a lot of these things will be able to be incorporated that can help us. But at the end of the day, we need to do better. We need to work harder and we need to not be afraid to fail. If something doesn't work, we just evaluate it and then we try something else. Well, I like your thoughts and your insights right there. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it seems like we're headed in the right direction. And David, you know, a lot of people, when they see you at these sporting events, they, they know who you are, they recognize you, but they might not know all of the things that you do behind the scenes. Can you share with me about some of the things that, that you deal with behind the scenes that a lot of those people don't know about? Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes the job's o overwhelming to me. Um, <laughs> there, there, there's, um, you know, there's, there's uh, so much work you're actually doing, uh, even with your conferences and with your fellow ads. I mean, I mean, scheduling events is, 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 I, and I have help, a lot of help with that, but especially in the football area, uh, is, is a lot of art, more art than science. It's, it's really, you know, when you're doing your best, is you're spending more time with student athletes. I mean, I, I do get the chance to meet with student athletes, uh, sometimes for positive things and sometimes for some, some self correct, some correction. Um, I, um, I don't, I don't believe in discipline for punishment. I believe in Danish, in discipline for correction. And overall we have an amazing student athletes, but a lot of it is just keeping up with, with the trends. A lot, there's a lot of reading on this job, um, talking to your peers, reading books, um, a lot of training we do for our coaches as well as our team on, on um, you know, how, how to be a healthier and smarter team. Uh, and there's just a lot of details. I mean, I try to stay out of the weeds. I've got great people to help me do that. One thing that I struggle with is sometimes I get a little too far into the weeds. So uh, I give my staff permission to tell me to get out of the weeds and, and, and let us handle that. And we'll let you know when we need to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good that you, gave, you told your staff to let you know about that. <laughs> Well, you have, you have to empower people. I mean, I mean, it, it is, this is not, uh, ADs, obviously you're the leader and you need to, uh, you need to set the tone, but so much about this is empowerment. The, the people on our staff and our team, all of our employees are, are so critical to our success. And, and really, you know, you know, at every st all staff meeting, I, I mentioned two things at every, at every, when we have our whole staff together. First came from uh, Pastor Wayne Cordero, and it's it's about you know try to get one percent better a day or do one thing better each day. Uh, if if you if you can do that, at the end of the year you're done three hundred sixty five things better, or you're three and a half times better. Also, so you focus on that. And the other thing is, so often we a lot of times people we try to catch people doing things wrong. I want to catch people. I want us to catch people people doing things right and praise them, and um, create that type of culture. And and it's important that, that our whole staff that we you know, we encourage each other. Um, cause as you do that, um, you know, that's how I think you, you, you change the department and you change the world really. David, I want to thank you for taking time in your schedule to be on the show today. I mean, I can, I, I can see why the UH athletic programs are headed in the right direction under your leadership and really about character and culture. And, and it's all about the student athletes, like you said, and, and having the coaches, really understand that as well. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a blessing. Um, as I tell our student athletes when we're recruiting trips is that you're not just playing for your team or the University of Hawaii, you're playing for the whole state. And that's an incredible responsibility and a great opportunity for them and all of us uh, to be Hawaii's team. So we're blessed to, to represent the, the entire state of Hawaii. And you are too. Thank you, David. Thanks. Aloha. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that David and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.